Chapter 1, The Future is Virtual Earth to the Future Our future is virtual. The information age is accelerating technology at an unprecedented speed, as we see more and more science fiction realized. Already today many of us live half online, and with every passing year the fantastic sci-fi metaverses of Ready Player One and Snow Crash seem less far-fetched. There's a long road ahead of us, as a new virtual future slowly becomes non-fiction, but it may not be as long as many think. Earth 2 believes that carving out the foundations of this world may be one of the most important ongoing technical developments of the next decade, and beyond. Earth 2 aims to bring people and technologies together by creating a robust location-based games and technologies platform, which supports strong virtual communities and economies. Earth 2 will be about people and the virtual representations of places which bring them together. For this reason, we believe it's critical to be transparent about our goals, plans, and approach with our community and followers from an early stage. Buying virtual land in Earth 2 can instantly offer you numerous income revenues starting from today and into the future. Most of this potential income is passive meaning your land can work for you without you needing to do anything. The value of your land will fluctuate as more people purchase and trade land in the same country. In addition to this your land can earn residual income based on future purchases inside that country and you can also earn an additional 5% by sharing your promo code with others. Chapter 2. What type of investor should I be? Getting started in the business of investing is much easier than it used to be. So is improving your returns if you already invest. No longer is the field restricted to the wealthy or large financial institutions. More and more these days everyday people like moms, dads, students and even children are trying their hand at what used to be the exclusive playground of the rich. However before delving into what is a very exciting and potentially financially rewarding world you should assess what type of investor you actually want to be. In the years that I have been investing I have seen people who haven't answered this question come and go and lately I've seen it happen with alarming frequency. Think about it for a second. Have you really thought about what you need to do to start creating wealth for you and your family? If not you need to seriously consider what type of investment style would be best for your position. Types of investors. The next thing you need to look at is what sort of analysis you want to conduct on the land that you are considering. Generally there are two schools of thought one being fundamental and the other technical. You will always find people pushing one or the other but it makes more sense to incorporate a blend both. Fundamentalists tend to look at tile profits, resources that might be discovered, future plans and high traffic locations. While those with a mathematical or scientific background might look at tile price charts employing various technical analysis techniques, ratios, indicators and trends in order to identify which tiles they want to look at further. You should realize that relying wholly on one or the other is not the wisest thing to do. For example a chart that has all the indications that a country is going to be a good choice for the future is useless if the country is going to be wiped out when the game is released. As I mentioned earlier a blend of the two should be considered. When you are deciding what type of investor you want to be, one of the most important considerations is your risk threshold. In other words how much you are willing to lose. This again will have an impact on the investment style that you choose, and will also have a relationship to the level of returns that you may be seeking. Investors come in many forms and there is no right or wrong way. Different things work for different people. It is vital that you decide which method best suits you and that you stick to this method. Chapter 3. Tips Tricks to Investing in Property Property investment has a lot of potential benefits, and it can help you build up a substantial wealth, in time of course. However, property investing has some risks, and no one can guarantee that everything will go okay and that the money will build up. Less risky than shares, virtual property investment attracts many people and has two major benefits, the income tax revenue and the capital growth. 
Property income taxes tax you receive as credits from land purchased in the country you own land. Capital growth represents the money made from the value of your properties. This is not guaranteed, because you have no guarantees that the value of a property will raise. If you plan on starting to do some property investing you don't have to start by investing in a place where you also live in. You can for example buy and land anywhere in the world. Please note that some countries are unavailable for purchase at the moment due to religious reasons. One of the first things you must consider after you've decided to perform a property investment is where to buy. It is recommended that you try to buy in a busy area that provides everything like high traffic and resources. A risk in property investment is that the value of the property you bought may decrease, and you may be forced to sell the property quickly, so consider this when buying and try to pick an area where you know you can always sell the property with no efforts. And the last advice about buying and selling a property is that before doing the property investment you can google a little about the history of the land, if there are resources, if there are landmarks or high traffic. Here is a tip, I have been flipping land that I purchased based on the interest in that area by buying tiles around an owner's land. In Earth 2 there is land that have sentimental value because of a place they grew up, got married, real world property etc. I have had success flipping property using this strategy alone. These are the basic things you should know about property investing, if you want to start investing into property. How would you like to flip land in your sleep and wake up to emails like this? Chapter 4 Most people's beliefs about investing are very tenuous. There are, of course, people who are very passionate about investing. They don't view investing as some esoteric subject, but rather as a field intimately connected to the human behavior they observe in their everyday lives. For everyone else, however, beliefs about investing come in the form of passive knowledge. The tendency is simply to accumulate an inventory of conventional dictums. Investing beliefs are formed much the way a student prepares for a test. If the subject of investing were as simple as a third grade spelling bee, this wouldn't be a problem. But, investing is a far more complex subject. That isn't to say it is necessarily a difficult subject. For some, it is relatively easy. But, it is never simple. An investor cannot analyze relationships with the certitude and precision a physicist can. The investor is concerned with human phenomena, which are necessarily complex phenomena. The complexity of the subject is what makes it appear so difficult. While you can develop a set of guiding principles, it is impossible to devise rules that will lead you to the best course of action in each and every case. If you try to build an intellectual edifice based on principles such as high returns on equity, strong consumer franchises, low price to earnings ratios, low enterprise value to EBIT ratios, high free cash flow margins, and rock solid balance sheets, you will fail. The entire structure will collapse, leaving the architect disillusioned. Why? because the items listed above are desirable attributes, nothing more and nothing less. They are not true principles. Even as rules of thumb, they are badly flawed. Ultimately, investment decisions are not made about general classes, they are made about special cases. Every investment decision requires good judgment and sound reasoning. You need to start with the correct principles. But, principles alone are not enough. You aren't being asked what the law is, you're being told to apply the law to the case before you. This is where a lot of people start to feel overwhelmed. Having learned that investing is not simply a matter of running down a checklist, they don't know where to begin. The answer is to start with what you know best. Begin with your most strongly held beliefs. Subject them to honest scrutiny. Then, and only then, apply them to the case at hand. Do you believe the concept of intrinsic value is a valid one? Do you believe it is a useful model? If so, then begin there. What does the concept of intrinsic value really mean? What conclusions follow from this belief? In the case of intrinsic value, the most difficult conclusion you'll have to grapple with is the idea that you can pay too much for a great business. For some, this is a relatively simple conflict to resolve. For whatever reason, they prefer cheap merchandise to quality merchandise. For others, the conflict between intrinsic value and investing in great businesses is painfully difficult to resolve. But, if you are ever going to have confidence in your judgments, you have to be willing to submit your investment beliefs to honest scrutiny. You have to be your own prosecutor. You have to present the evidence against your thesis. If you aren't willing to do that, you'll end up questioning the investment beliefs you do hold every time you underperform the market. Many proven investment techniques have lagged the market over short periods of time. Occasionally, the performance gap has been very wide. Regardless of whether you adopt a primarily qualitative or primarily quantitative approach to investing, this short-term underperformance is unavoidable. 
It's avoidable in the sense that a good investor can get lucky and not suffer a down year for a decade or so. Likewise, it's possible to outperform an index year after year, if you're lucky. But, it isn't possible to adopt a strategy that guarantees such outperformance. The best you can do is adopt a strategy that offers the right odds. A series of investment operations undertaken in accordance with such a strategy will not guarantee favorable outcomes in every case, but it should provide satisfactory results over the long term. There's more than one way to skin a cat. I don't want to encourage dogmatism. But, I do want to make sure you not confuse that which is conventional with that which is reasonable. There is a lot of conventional, moderate sounding advice given to investors that does not hold up to careful scrutiny. The most obvious example is diversification. Making a series of bets on separate high probability events is an excellent idea. Diversifying across several different asset classes and hundreds of securities is something entirely different. Even if there are hundreds or thousands of excellent investment opportunities, it does not follow that an investor ought to make every reasonable bet. After all, some will appear to be more reasonable than others. There is no sense in taking on several difficult tasks in the hopes of achieving a result that can be produced by taking on a few very easy tasks. You don't have to agree with me on all these issues, most people don't. But, it is vital that you question the unstated assumptions upon which an investment operation is based. You might come to the same conclusion as those who engage in wide diversification. But, you need to come to that conclusion on your own. Many investors have not even bothered to consider the underlying premise of diversification. They aren't really sure why diversification is a desirable strategy. They don't know how it minimizes risk or at what point the benefit from adding an additional position becomes immaterial. Diversification may be a prudent strategy, but you can only decide that for yourself after you've considered the benefits in terms of risk reduction and the detriments in terms of selectivity reduction. If I were forced to spend my life betting on horse races, I'm quite certain I would bet on very few races. Whenever I did bet on a race, I bet on several different horses. Why? Because I know more about people than I do about horses. The likelihood that a few horses in a few races get too much favorable attention seems much greater than the likelihood that I could ever make reasonably specific judgments as to which horse is most likely to win a given race. Of course, I would do best if I didn't bet on any horse races at all. So, the question is whether land are anything like horses. I don't think they are. When it comes to businesses, I'm a lot more comfortable with the idea of picking the few winners from the many losers, especially when the odds get out of whack. The one tactic that would remain the same is in action. Acting less and thinking more is sound advice wherever money or commitment is concerned. A successful investor has to have confidence in his judgments. I don't know how you can gain that confidence without subjecting your beliefs to honest scrutiny. An unexamined philosophy will never exorcise your deepest doubts, and for as long as these doubts remain, you will be unable to find the confidence you seek. Chapter 5, Tips to Build a Successful Portfolio Know Your Goals Consider how much money you'll need for your children's education or your retirement. Whatever your vision for the future might be, set your goals and develop a concrete plan for meeting them. Define your investment time horizon. If you're not planning on retiring anytime soon, you might want to have a portfolio that includes more long-term investments. If retirement is just around the corner, consider a more conservative approach. Determine your risk tolerance. Figure out your risk comfort level and compare that with what you can afford. In general, the longer you have to invest, the bigger risk you can take. My last tip is to not focus too much on landmarks because they won't exist in Earth 2 focus more on locations you think might have resources. The price of land inside Earth 2 fluctuates from country to country. Each country starts at the price of only 0.10 for 10 mx 10 meters of land. The value changes depending on trading price and demand per country giving you potential opportunities to buy low and sell high. I developed a strategy of buying one tile at a time and listing it on the marketplace for under market value. If you sell a tile at under market value then you give an opportunity to the buyer to resell and profit as well it becomes a win-win situation and allows you to flip property faster. In conclusion I have not been this excited about something since I discovered Bitcoin in 2013. Follow me on YouTube at Goldbagger I have videos that will keep you guys updated on the latest updates regarding Earth 2. Sign up to earth2.io and if you use my referral code.